So in this segment, we're going to be talking about rebel Tories planning vote strikes to capitalise on Prime Minister's weakened position. Apparently, they are planning on vote striking the um, Northern Ireland Protocol legislation, potentially. Um, this video is recorded on the day of it, but it's you know before the legislation is set to be published. Um, so rebel Conservative MPs are drawing up plans for vote strikes to paralyse new lawmaking and capitalise on the dramatic Boris Johnson no confidence vote. So Johnson obviously didn't do very well in his no confidence vote. Um, I think it's about 42% of Tory MPs voted in no confidence, which is uh, really bad, especially given how many um, ministers on payroll, which means that they get more than just their MP salary. They plan to start with a showdown over the bill to override sections of the protocol to be published uh, today of day of recording. Um, Johnson suffered a worse than expected rebellion on Monday. 40% of MPs voting to remove him under the current rules. He's protected uh, from a no confidence vote for another year, but that could change um, given that there's elections for the 1922 committee happening uh, fairly soon and they could cut that one year down to six months. Having used up most their most powerful tool, Rebels, on Tuesday, they wanted to flex our muscles and prove that they're not going away. So essentially, what they're saying is just because you want a no-confidence vote doesn't mean your position is safe, similar to what they did to Theresa May. Those who declared no-confidence span different factions of the party from the soft left. I mean, they're not soft left or nation conservative party. They are centre-right at best. At best, let's be honest there. They're not soft left. Come on, Guardian. Um, they're unhappy with policies from deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda and privatising Channel 4 because it's pretty brazen why the government are sending asylum seekers to Rwanda. It's red meat to the base and they're privatising Channel 4 because Channel 4 have been the most critical of them out of all of the different uh, media outlets. Um, to those who believe high tax, high spend approach is too left wing. I mean, he's taxing, he's putting more of the tax burden on working class people and lower middle class people. So to them to argue that's too left wing is just ridiculous. A left wing government that does that is not a left wing government. High spend approach is not even spending that much really. He's wasted a lot of money on um, things like test and trace, for example, and uh, four billion on PPE that we couldn't use. So again, more ridiculous points from some ridiculous people. Given the uncoordinated way the vote was tri um, r triggered, you know there was no there was no one leading the rebellion. There was no one who'd put their name on it apart from Jeremy Hunt. But even then, um, he didn't do that great a job. Several said they had not been contacted by anyone encouraging them to vote Johnson out, claiming the swell of opposition was organic. That's true, but you know, to really oppose government, you need someone leading it. Uh, Johnson called the result, which he won with the backing of 211 MPs, really good, which obviously it's not. Um, he urged people to move on, and of course the person who commits the bad actions asks you to move on. You know, The ridiculousness of these people is just insane. Yes, I'm the one who wronged you, but I'm asking you to move on because I'm a scumbag. However, some rebels vowed to keep their efforts to oust him, um, oust him by going on vote strikes. And imagine, right, if you have, um, what, what's he got, an 80-seat majority, something around that, right, and you start losing government votes, that's really bad. That's really bad. A stonking majority and still losing votes is just crazy. You can hear my cat. I'm going to let him in a minute. Abstaining on key pieces of legislation, um, they might have otherwise felt strong-armed into supporting. So essentially, they're going to try and defy the whip. Um, and that's a bold strategy. Several gave the Northern Ireland bill as an example, predicted there would be huge backlash given Johnson and the government whip's authority had been so public and undermined with the no confidence vote. You know, there's not a lot of faith in the Johnson government. If you look at these um, opinion polls, you know, 68% of people think that he's doing badly. Only 26% of people think he's doing well, just over a quarter, and 6% don't know. Oh, boy, do I envy those don't know people, honestly. Um, but you can see the vast majority of people think he's not doing a good job, the ones polled anyways. While well, some rebels were happy to give number 10 until party conference season in September, which that's what Johnson's desperate to get to, get to conference, you know, where he can re-rally uh, support to him. He has to survive until then. That's where he'll be safer. But the problem is they're apparently going to do that conference in Liverpool, which is wild considering l most of Liverpool do not like Tories. You know, to prove he understands their concerns, others were less convinced drastic changes were coming. Obviously, with the... Um, the elections coming up, by-elections coming up, that could be another big problem for Johnson if um, the Conservatives lose those two seats, which is looking very likely. 
Nikki Da Costa, Director of Legislative Affairs, uh, Affairs under May, said there's unlikely to face uh, Johnson's unlikely to face widespread opposition on the main substance of policy, but on detailed policy, you will see a real push for concessions. So essentially, um, what this person who worked under Theresa May is saying is that they won't really force down main um, policies, but they will look for concessions, which will come in the form of amendments, most likely. They'll look to amend key pieces of legislation and force the government to accept it. What those amendments look like, I don't know. There isn't a clear uh, policy ground that unites the 148 rebels. That's a key problem um, because that's going to make it hard for them to oppose the government because the government can spin it as well. This is the best legislation you're going to get if you don't vote this to, um, vote this through. Then the kind of softer side, the softer kind of um, Tories or the uh, more really stupid Tories might get their way. So the government is saying this is the best you're going to get. Accept it or else. Um, other rebels suggested Johnson would be forced to avoid tabling controversial legislation in a bid not to face embarrassing um, mass defiance by Tory MPs. If they try and pass, you know, um, legislation and it's voted down by Tory MPs, which almost happened, let's not forget, with the second lockdown, that's really embarrassing for the government. That's truly embarrassing to have such a big majority and to lose. One like in the situation the Prime Minister faced to a scene from The Simpsons in which Sideshow Bob ran into rakes. This genuinely made me laugh so much. Um, because it's kind of true that he's going to keep walking into into rakes constantly. The Conservative MPs are convinced that Johnson, because he's constantly mired in scandals, is going to implode. Um, that's what they're waiting for. Some rebels also believe the ministerial colleagues are likely to quit if the Conservatives lose the two crucial by-elections. Be interesting to see which ministers quit. It probably won't be the top ones, um, but it might be some you know kind of junior ministers etc. who might um, look to resign. Due, this is due to be held on the 23rd in seats of Wakefield and uh, Triverton and Horniton in an effort to pile more pressure on Johnson. So if he loses those by-elections, it's going to look very, very bad for him. Because these are key, you know, this is a key sign of his electability. If he cannot hold on to what they um, what they gained back in 2019, there's going to be a lot of Red War MPs nervous. The only problem is that by-elections are not the best results of what can happen in the general election. By-elections, um, you know, the smaller parties like the Lib Dems can put in a lot more resources to win these seats. They have um, less money than the Tories, but in single elections, they can pump in a lot of resources, a lot of volunteers there. They are also keen to bide their time until the Privileges Committee inquiry begins into whether Johnson misled Parliament. Because obviously if the Privileges Committee finds that Johnson misled Parliament, what, what, what more can they do to defend him at that point? He's indefensible. He already is, but at that point, it's he's done. You know, you can't back him anymore, because if you do, you look like an idiot. Some are unfazed, um, having a lack of levers to force Johnson out, believing he will blow himself up. They believe he'll blow himself up. Some Tory um, MPs also believe a reshuffle will be carried out to promote those offered jobs for exchange for their loyalty. Um, but um, the issue is that those who are demoted and passed over again could swing against them. So essentially, when you do um, a reshuffle and you're start moving ministers around, you want to reward those who have been loyal to you over competency because this Tory government don't believe in competency. But the ones who don't get promotions or the promotions they want, they're going to be very annoyed by it. Um, and that's a key problem. They could rebel against you. If they decide to leave the cabinet, they could be leading backbench opposition. So it should be quite interesting. The other problem is that reshuffles are great distractions to make it look like the government's actually changing up and doing Doing stuff but the problem is if they if he does a reshuffle now and then they lose those by-elections he's got nothing to distract the public with one mp on the government's payroll so these are an mp who's paid more than the average mp was critical of johnson and they are on the payroll most likely they would have voted to show confidence in johnson because they make extra money he already used the card when he was reshaping number 10 there's no, nothing practical he can do to br help bring 148 people on side but the thing is he doesn't necessarily have to bring 148 people on side he just got to bring some of them on side it's obvious the game is up it's only a matter of when so even a person on payroll saying like the jig is going to be up soon uh, and maybe they voted to um, show they had confidence in johnson because they just want to pocket the extra money for a bit longer um but you know the argument that he's reshaping number 10 he's already used it so he can't use it again. You know, if he does a reshuffle now before the by-elections, it's going to make him look stupid. After attention grew, number 10, on those front benches who are not declared public support for the Prime Minister, um, they sent out a load of messages to people to try and get public support because the day, if your ministers don't support you, you're done as Prime Minister. You know, George Freeman, a minister, um, a junior one most likely, um, he, he said he was not going to get drawn into a Twitter outing or a witch hunt. Um, Nicola Richards set a minister's aide saying that although I share the anger of many of my constituents, she gave him my support of his reassurances and promises to deliver. And again, you know, these people, you know, they were essentially pushed to publicly back Johnson, but they might have voted against him. 
It's unlikely they did, but there's part, it's possible they could have voted against him because the Tory no confidence is secret. There's a reason why it's secret. So it doesn't. Um, so ministers can obviously vote against their leader if they want to, but it also protects them against purges and witch hunts, etc. So they could easily say, oh yeah, we support Johnson, and then reverse card, they don't. While there was an appetite for immediately slashing the length of time for Johnson to be immune in a no confidence vote from 12 to 6, um, they're not 100% comfortable with doing that. Mark Harper, former Conservative Chief Whip, gave Johnson a matter of weeks to see the fruits of the promises of reform. And again, what's he meant to do in the space of a few weeks? It's a ridiculous timeline. Either you don't have confidence in him now or you do. A few weeks is not going to change that. Harper said despite um, said that despite the growing nearly 80-seat majority, we're not using it to deliver conservative policies. And again, what are conservative policies? You're already taking loads of money out of um, you know working class people. What more do you want to do, pal? But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is quite interesting. They're going to use vote strikes. They're going to do their best to kind of, you know, really nibble at Johnson's power. I don't know how effective they're going to be. But um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.